Hi, my name is Jazzy. Today I'm going to have surgery at Phoenix Children's Hospital. This will be my third time having surgery. Is this your first time? The first time I learned I was going to have surgery, I had so many questions, and I wanted to know about everything I would be doing and seeing. Luckily, I met a child life specialist the day of my surgery, and she explained everything. We even talked about our feelings about surgery. So let's get started on the tour today. The day of your surgery, your parents will park in the garage located off Thomas Road. There is a special street you can turn on called Children's Way. After you have parked, there are signs in the garage that will lead you to the main entrance of the hospital. Once you have entered the hospital, there are friendly people at the big desk waiting for you to sign in. After you have signed in, you will go to Admitting. In this area, there are very nice people that are in charge of asking lots of questions and making sure you have paperwork for the nurses and doctors upstairs. You will also get a special name band that lets people who work at the hospital know who you are while you are here. The name band may go on your wrist or your ankle. Once all the paperwork is completed, you will go to the elevators and press the number 4. Each floor in the hospital has really cool animal sculptures. The fourth floor has a baby donkey with its mother. It's really cute. Once you have reached the fourth floor, you will check in at the volunteer desk to let them know you have arrived. The volunteer at the desk will ask you to take a seat with your family, and he or she will let the staff know you are waiting. While you are in the waiting area, there are fun things to do, like watching TV, reading a book, or playing with toys you have brought from home. A nurse will call your name out in the waiting area. From there, you and your parents will head back to the pre-op area. Once you're back in the pre-op area, you will first be asked to step on a scale to get your height and your weight. After that, you will have your temperature checked with a special thermometer to see how warm you are. The thermometer rolls across your forehead and lights up with a special number for the nurse to read. The nurse will then take you to your private room where you will have a chance to change into your hospital pajamas. But before you change, there are two things the nurse will need to do. First, you will have something placed around your arm called a blood pressure cuff. Do you know what a blood pressure cuff is? A blood pressure cuff is a soft band that can wrap around your leg or arm and then it gives it a big squeeze. The second thing the nurse will do is check your pulse. This is done using something called a pulse oximeter. It is a light up sticker that lights up to my favorite color, red. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt at all. After you have changed into your hospital pajamas, a nurse will come into your room to talk with you and your parents about your surgery. The nurse will want to know the last time you had anything to eat or drink. Don't worry, if you don't understand everything, a child life specialist will come into the room to explain it to you. Do you know what a child life specialist does? A child life specialist is someone that helps explain what you will be seeing and doing while you are in the hospital. Your child life specialist will help you get ready for your surgery by showing you pictures of the special medical equipment you will see and use in the operating room. Once my child life specialist explained what I'd be doing, I felt so much better. She even let me ask her questions about staying overnight. Before you go to surgery, you and your family will have a chance to speak with your surgeon. This is the doctor that performs your surgery. Your anesthesiologist, the doctor that gives you that special sleep medicine, and your operating room nurse, often called the OR nurse for short. While you are waiting for them to arrive, your child life specialist will tell you all the fun things you can do to stay busy. When I had surgery, I liked playing games, going to the playroom, and watching movies in my bed. What do you think you want to do while you wait for your doctors? When my doctors came into my room, they were wearing blue hospital scrubs and funny looking hats. Some even had on masks. The child life specialist told me they would be wearing these outfits because the room I was going to have my surgery in was the cleanest room in the whole entire hospital. They wear these scrubs to keep the room as germ-free as possible. Next, my nurse brought in a small little medicine cup that was filled with special pink medicine. She told me this might make me feel silly, and she even called it silly juice. 
Sometimes anesthesiologists will give you this medicine if you are feeling anxious. After you take the medicine, you will need to stay in your bed because it can make you feel dizzy. It was finally time for my surgery to start and everyone was ready, including me. My OR nurse came back into the room to tell me it was time to take a ride on my bed to that special clean room. I gave my mom and dad a big hug and a kiss, and off I went. All right, here we go. We'll take good care of you. My nurse told me they would wait in the waiting area that was right down the hallway. I felt happy and I was ready to see the special clean room where my doctors were waiting for me. Once I got into the room, my nurse parked the bed I was laying on right next to the OR bed that was already there. All I had to do was scoot on over. The first thing I noticed was the big brown lights on the ceiling. They weren't on, but I knew they would turn them on once I fell asleep. The room looked just like the one my child life specialist showed me. I was doing exactly what she said I would do. Once I was on the OR bed, the nurse put the blood pressure cuff back on my arm, the pulse oximeter back on my finger, and the three round stickers on my chest and side. The anesthesiologist was there too. He put a soft pink see-through mask over my nose and chin, and the mask smelled just like strawberry bubble gum. The air that came through the mask was special air that helped me fall asleep for my surgery. The child life specialist prepared me for this part too. She even let me practice taking deep breaths through the mask in the pre-op room. She told me once I was asleep, I wouldn't feel or hear anything, and that this special sleeping medicine was different than the sleep I usually do at home. She also told me I would wake up in the recovery room and my family would be there waiting for me. As soon as I woke up, I saw my family next to me. I could tell they were waiting for me to open my eyes. I also had a new nurse next to my bed. He asked me how I was doing or if I was uncomfortable because sometimes patients can wake up feeling sleepy or dizzy. When I woke up, I had a tiny plastic tube in my hand called an IV. The IV is like a tiny straw that gives my body a big drink of water, or I can even get medicine if I need that too. He did give me some medicine to feel better. Sometimes kids will get an IV before their surgery and others get one afterwards. He even offered me a choice of water, juice, or a popsicle. Guess which one I chose. The popsicle, of course. When it was time for me to go home, my nurse brought me a wheelchair. I wasn't quite strong enough to walk, so he pushed me all the way to our car. I felt so lucky to have met really nice people, but I was so excited to get home. Some patients have to stay at the hospital for different lengths of time to heal. If you have to stay, your nurse will take you in your bed to your private room. One adult will be allowed to stay the night with you. Thank you for joining me on the tour. Maybe we'll see you at Phoenix Children's Hospital. Bye!